everyone and welcome to another episode of Well Done Homestead. We have a special guest today. His name is Brian. He's a real good friend of mine. So grab a cup of coffee and join us for this morning's conversation. Alrighty, good evening ladies and gentlemen. It is time for a random interview. And uh, it is a beautiful evening this evening. And uh, I have my friend Brian here. And we're gonna talk about uh, Brian's life. The life of Brian. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> Not that one. Not the life of that Brian. But anyway, so uh, yeah, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna start off with a nice little softball question. Okay, a super simple one. All right. All right. What is the funniest thing you've ever experienced? The funniest story that you have ever heard? Well, I thought about this, and I think when my son Austin was in Boy Scouts, there's a pretty good group of boys, pretty good group of leaders. And we had a they, we set up a challenge weekend where it was all, you know, using a compass and shooting bows, and then a couple other things. And then in the evening, we wanted to do a. a an eating challenge because Fear Factor was big back then. So we wanted to set up something and have him try and eat. Well, Rich, the the leader, um, he got he likes Vegemite, so he got some Vegemite, and no one had heard, like we heard of it, but none of the kids did. So they started putting on crackers. Oh no! And uh, all the kids were like bouncing around, like looking, what's that? What's that? And I was like, huh, it looks like grape jelly. And my son goes, I love grape jelly takes a cracker just shoves the whole thing in his mouth and of course when all the other kids saw him just eat it they all started eating and about three seconds later every single one of them was puking <laughs> he's like that's not grape jelly i'm like no it is not grape jelly but vegemite it, it wasn't that oh, bad vegemite justin Gross. we're doing an interview oh <laughs> it's good of you to join us sorry <laughs> you're good bud you're good uh, okay okay <laughs> vegemite vegemite Oh, that stuff sucks. I hated that stuff. I, I mean, I wouldn't eat it just for fun, but it wasn't like vomit inducing like all the kids did. So I had a, a similar experience. We were doing that fear factor crap when I was in college and somebody, no, this was after college. We were, it was a young married thing. Miriam and I were just married. We were living in Denver and they took liverwurst. I've never had that. It's it's as bad as you think, plus some. <laughs> plus worse. <laughs> plus worse. It was so bad. I It went in, and it literally came right back out. <laughs> I like. I was thinking to myself, I, I grabbed it. I knew what it was. I like, you reach in the paper bag. I grab it, pull it out, and I knew what it was. I'm like, oh, boy, I'm not going to you know, wimp out. So I just chucked it in. I'm thinking, I'm just going to chuck it in. And I'm not even going to chew it. I'm just going to swallow it. I chucked it in, it hit the back of my throat, and came right back yeah. out, just like that. It was so bad. Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> so, I, how many of these kids were yakking? I think there's probably five or seven of them <laughs> at that time. That's awesome. How, how old was Austin? Probably no more than 12, 13. Yeah. We're going to have to have him come on here and do an interview. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to ask him about Vegemite, see if he likes it. <laughs> yeah, I know the answer. <laughs> Oh, man. Yep. All righty. All right. So uh, question number two, what is your favorite activity and why is it your favorite activity? Oh, my gosh. Favorite activity. Let's keep this PG. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> man, I don't know. Probably fly fishing. Yeah. Because you don't have to catch fish. It's right. It's just being out there, the the methodical casting, you know, it's kind of like you're trying to hit a specific target, and I don't know, it's 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 more involved than any other kind of fishing, and it's like it's peaceful, and if I don't catch any fish, I'm just as centered when I'm done fishing is yeah. when I started. Yeah, right on. Where if I go bass fishing or something, I'm not catching it. It's like, oh, this is a waste of time. 
indeed. And it is different. Yeah. And you're the one that introduced me to fly fishing. Mm -hmm. Gosh, eight years ago, man. Can you believe that? It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, you got me hooked, no pun intended, <laughs> completely hooked on fly fishing. Um, I don't think I've used my spinning reel oh, in many, many years, honestly, in a long time. Uh, I haven't been bass fishing in a while. But yeah, fly fishing, I get that. Oh, boy, I like being outside. I like the, the water. Yeah. I'm right there with you. That's cool. Good stuff. Uh, all right, so uh, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? And why would you live there? I don't know. I haven't been many places outside the U.S. I always think Alaska would be nice just because of the ruggedness of it. But I don't think I could do... 24 hours of dark for however many months. <laughs> like, if, if it was, you know, the days were kind of similar to here. Yeah. Anywhere west, Montana, anywhere mountainous and, yeah. you know, not as populated. Yeah, probably, I'd say Montana, because I've been out that way, so I actually right know on. what it looks like. But Alaska, I think I would like. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, right. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, there's something about the the rugged mountains, uh, the the just. I mean, you've got to be on your toes. Yeah, you're not. You're relying on you, not on getting to the grocery store or getting to. You know, worried about what Wi-Fi wi -Fi or <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, man, I get that. Plus, but they have some awesome fly fishing out there. So yes, they do. Yeah, uh, Colorado. Uh, I have fish in Colorado. Have Black you really? Fish. Cutthroat? Oh, yeah, I caught one. Did you? But that's all I wanted to do. We went out for Jeremy Smith's wedding. That, you told me about that. And uh, we went out a couple days early and did some hiking around there, which is awesome out, out that way. And, uh, yeah, a couple of us broke away, and I said, I just want to catch a cutthroat. So we fished until I caught one, and then it started raining, and they're like, okay, let's go. <laughs> oh, well, what are you going to do? That's awesome, though. That's yeah. very awesome. Um, you know, it's crazy because Mary and I lived in, in Denver and then we lived in Golden for a little bit. We lived in, uh, Littleton and, or just outside of Golden, I guess we were in Littleton. Um, and I never fished out there. Like we fished like maybe one time, I think. Uh, and it wasn't really Miriam's thing. And I was like, I don't know, I was in my twenties. I really, I don't know. I, I, I was more into rock climbing at the time. That's a good place to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we did a lot of it. Uh, but yeah, I, just, I never got into... I'd like to go back. Well, yeah, fish. especially fly fishing. Oh, my gosh. Now being into fly fishing. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, let's see here. What is one thing that you have done or experienced in your life that you have never told anyone before? I may have told somebody this, but not many people. And if I have, it's been a long, long time ago. So back in my younger days, I, I always had sport bikes, you know, crotch rockets. Well, my first one was a Yamaha FCR 700, FCR 600, FCR 600. And uh, I was working down Greenwood at the time. And I was late for work, so I'm like booking it down the main drag there, whatever, whatever. Um, past the cut where the, the two roads come to a point and yeah. then it come, turns into one lane going into Greenwood. And I'm just, I'm just flying. And uh, I was coming up on the top of this hill right before it drops down into Greenwood. And I look over to my right and I see a cop. And I'm like, man, he's gonna, he's gonna pull out and get me. <laughs> and just before I drop <coughs> below the hill, I see his lights come on. And I was like, man, this is a straight shot. I could run him, but I don't really want to do that. And just then I saw someone's driveway kind of went up the hill. And I like slammed on the back tire and it was almost like duh, 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 oh my up the driveway and I went up the driveway so fast that when I turned around, like the momentum, I, I fell over on, with the bike. And just when I did, the cop went flying by <laughs> and I was like, well, that worked. So I just lifted my bike back up, got on it and people in the, in the house probably thinking, what is this guy doing? Yeah. And I drove down and I kind of stayed back so the cop had seen his rear mirror and went down to my work. It was a pizza shop. And I pulled around back, and we had a, you know, a back door where the yeah. deliveries came in and stuff, and there was a little storage room, and I just pulled right in there. <laughs> Into the storage room? Into the, yep. Because <laughs> I didn't want it sitting out. Yeah. And boss was like, why is your bike in the back there? I was like, well, I, there were some 
kids messing around the other night. I was afraid they were going to mess with it. So I, I just put it inside. I hope that's okay. He's like, oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so I was like, oh, my word. Yeah. So needs to say, I was even scared going home that night because it's a, it was a very recognizable bike. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Probably not many of them around. No, and it was it was pearl white, and it was red, white, and blue. Oh, it, it was oh, it was a gorgeous bike. But what year was that? What year was it that it happened, or the yeah. bike? Yeah, Bulls. Uh, well, what year was the bike? Ninety. No. I don't know what year the bike was. I don't remember. Ninety one, maybe ninety one FCR six hundred. Okay. That was probably ninety six, nineteen ninety six. Yeah. <laughs> And how fast are you going? Too fast. You won't say? Fast enough that they would have taken my license and pulled me over. I don't know, probably 80. Okay. And I think it's 55 there. So. All right on, right on. And, and so, just out of curiosity, how fast have you gone on a motorcycle? What's the fastest you've been on a motorcycle? I don't want to say that. Yeah, I'll tell you mine. 140. On what bike? Jixxer, 750. I gotta tell you, Jixxer 750 was a super underrated bike. Well, yeah, because it, with the power to weight ratio, it was it hung out with all the 900s and the 1000s too. But it wasn't quite like it couldn't quite hang with the 1000s. But because right. it was so much lighter, it definitely stayed with the 900s. Well, 600 frame. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right, man. And what year was that? The bike. Sure. <laughs> Oh, goodness, 2006? Okay. Yeah, that wasn't that long ago. That was when I moved, lived in Martinburg where I had the bike. And then I sold it when I was working the paper mill because all I ever did was drive it to the paper mill back. And back, like, yeah. That's a lot of bike just to have to yeah, drive back it. and forth to work. So how about, about I it? sold it. Plus, I, I, it was hard not to be stupid on it. So, <laughs> I just it. And, and it's funny because that's the same reason why I got rid of the bike I'm about ready to tell you about. When we lived in California, I had uh, a VFR uh, 800, and uh, it was uh, actually a 792 cubic. You know how they are; like yeah. they'll, they'll stamp the thing, but on the oh, on the sales slip it says 800 cc. Anyway, right. it's not quite 800 cc, um, but it had that V4 engine, and it was torquey. I mean, real torquey. I liked that bike a lot. Um, it would have been an O2, I think, O1 or O2. That's what, the same engine that was in that. Zephyr. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, I picked that bike up for pretty cheap. I want to say I picked it up for like three grand. And um, I took it on a long trip down to Southern California and back. We came back on the PCH on Highway 1. And I got home, and that's when I started having tinnitus. I lost my hearing in my left ear, started getting vertigo. It was bad. Like, I was sick, sick with vertigo for weeks. And um, I didn't want to get rid of my bikes. But I knew I needed to because I I just I I'd turn wrong and my inner ear would go nuts and I'd get vertigo. So I could be driving and then get vertigo like that, yeah, and that's, that's not just good. not safe. No. So I knew that I was gonna take a last ride kind of thing, and uh, I took it out, took it for a ride. I came back home after my ride, and I walk in, and my wife was just like, she looks at me, she goes, "What did you do?" And I'm like, "What?" She goes, "You have that look. What did you do?" I'm like, it's probably best if I not tell you. <laughs> and she goes, all right, now I need to know. What were you doing? And I was like, 148. <laughs> she goes, you're selling that bike. I'm like, yeah, I'm selling the bike. <laughs> yeah, that's that's scary fast. You it know, is. There's not many roads you don't run out of real estate. And, and it's, that's it. Yeah. There's a stretch along, it was Highway 4 uh, near where we lived. And uh, it was it was a straight stretch. I don't want to say it was like four miles long, straight stretch. But it was only two lanes, and there was orchards on each side. So a dog comes running out of the trees, and you're done. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. You, a bee hitting your face, and you're done. I mean, it was it was crazy. I Tell remember what, that Route 40 down south. Oh yeah, that's that'd be a good stretch to see. Yeah, it would. It would. There's a, that stretch uh, Highway 70 through Kansas is nice too, because yeah. <laughs> it's straight for like 15 or 20 miles at a clip. Um, but yeah, anyway, but yeah, it, the things we do when we're young and stupid, right? I mean, it's only God's grace that... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really. That's facts. But 100%. Yeah. All right. We make the mistake so we can tell people, other people that they shouldn't. That's right. 
That's absolutely right. Uh, yeah, absolutely. All righty, so um, let's see. Uh, next question. What is the most challenging or difficult thing you have ever experienced in your life? When I was three, I had an ingrown toenail, and it was scan. It, it really bugged me. <laughs> yeah, but I got over it. So That's I'm good. good. I'm good. <laughs> That's good. No, I guess uh, I was in an accident where I worked. Got burnt pretty bad. Uh, it was a boiling, high alkaline, way high alkaline, 14 pH chemical. It burnt my eyes, my arms, my legs. I couldn't see for a year. Um, that was pretty rough. And it, it was rough on me in my humanness, and it was it was rougher on me because it was hard on my family. That yeah. was harder for me to deal with than me being hurt. And it, like going through it, like there were so many things that God had put in place so I could go through that. Yeah. Like I never really felt like, oh, this is horrible. I mean, it was, and it was painful, and I didn't like not being able to see for that long, but I don't know. There's so many positives that came out of it. I never really looked at it as a, I mean, it was a bad thing, but it wasn't. Right. It was, it was a tool God used for his purposes. Indeed. So, so when you said it was, it was difficult on you because of your family, are you saying because of what they experienced as you experienced it? Like how it affected them? Well, yeah. Like, just like my wife pretty much had to wait on me in the foot. Like I mm. couldn't even see eat. I had to learn how to eat without being able to see my food. And, right. Um, and that would limit what you could eat. Like, like the things that you could eat, probably. Yeah. yeah, and I couldn't take care of anything around the house. I couldn't do the fire. I could, you know what I mean? I was yeah. pretty much useless. Um, and my, the kids were just starting high school then, so it was, I mean, that's rough to see. Yeah. So Austin was like 14, 15? Probably, yeah, because it wasn't driving yet. Okay. Yeah, probably 14, 15. And Kennedy's, what, two years behind him? Yeah, so she was 11 or 12. That is a challenge. Yeah. And, and since then, so that would have been, what, 12 years ago? 2012, January 16, 2012. So yeah, 11, almost 12 years ago. Yeah, 12 years just January. Just January. Yep. Um, and uh, when did you get your sight back? Huh. Well, to be able to see something other than light and dark was the following, I think March or April, of 2013. Because they had glued, <laughs> they stitched on some kind of membrane, and then they put a soft con or a glued a hard contact on there with like some kind of super glue, and then they put a big giant like gushy contact over it to protect my eyelid from all that. So like you're trying to see through like four white, layers of weird, like a white trash bag. Holy, holy. that's pretty much what I could see was like holding up a white trash bag and looking through it. That's what I could see. Oh my word! So, yeah. So, and I said, well, when are you taking these contacts off? And they're just like, well, we're just going to wait till they, the glue wears out and falls off. I was like, you're kidding me. So you, that was like 15, 16 months. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So then when it finally did come off, I mean, the vision was still horrible. Right. But at least I could, I could get to the shed in my backyard where before I couldn't. Right. I got lost in my backyard, which is another funny story. You got lost in your backyard? Yeah. It was only like 50 yards to the shed, and I was like, I want to see if I can make it out of the shed. And I got halfway, and I couldn't see the shed, and I couldn't really make out where the house was. Oh, and I was like, no. I, I was like freaking out. And Darcy was like, take 10 steps. So I, I was like, oh, okay. I see the shape. <laughs> and I walked on the porch. <laughs> so, like, how are you doing that again? <laughs> having known your wife a little bit, um, d did... Um, was it helpful for her to, to push you a little bit? Because I'm sure she did. Yeah. It was helpful to you. Yeah, she needed to a lot of times. Cause I, well, not so much during, during that time. Later on then when the guy had some anxiety issues and stuff. Right. Like she, 
she knew kind of what it was and just right. knew I just had to get up and get moving. But during that, she didn't really push me too much. I was more like I just assumed once I could see everything would be back to normal and I'd be good to go. Right. Um, so I was just like basically waiting. So I would take my little blind man stick and walk around town just to see if I could. No kidding. Yeah. I used to walk to Bean Hill. <laughs> really? Yeah. Jeez. That's a couple miles. About a mile and a half, isn't it? I, I, I mean, round trip, it'd be almost three. Yeah. Probably a mile, mile and a half. Two and back. Yeah. yeah. Wow. The hardest part was crossing the road. Well, yeah. 866. Well, yeah, because you have to listen for traffic. You can't see it. <laughs> That's right. Oh, my gosh. So, the one time I... Like, we had a family friend that would, when Darcy had to go back to work, she would stay with me and get me lunch, and we, she'd watch the Waltons, and I'd listen to it, because I couldn't see it. And she would Which take, is lots of fun, because there's some definite sections where it's just music yeah. and sound effects, and you can't tell what's going on. No, You're just I like, just, oh, that's I fun. I just figured it out. <laughs> but I, I was like, she's like, I can't be here this day. I know you have a dentist appointment. You'll be okay. I was like, oh, yeah, I can make it just down there. Which I did just fine going down because there was not much traffic. Well, coming right. back, it was right around noonish, and there was a lot of traffic on the main drag going this way. Not coming towards me, but you right. can't tell when you're that close to the intersection. You just hear oh, cars coming. You're Lord. like, well, I don't want to cross yet, so I'm standing there, you know, leaning on my cane, and then I like see this flashing, and I was like, what the heck? And I hear, you need a hand, and I was like, no, I'm just waiting for traffic. Oh, I got gotcha. you. It was the the cop. He turned his lights on, blocked traffic, walked me That's across awesome. the road. Oh. Which, you, was it someone low? Was it, it was Carrie. Yeah. Oh, man. He's awesome. I love that guy. I know. He's good. It was, it was just like, <laughs> That's one of those stories you just sit back around. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. But yeah, so then it was, oh, my. What did they do after that? After the, the contacts come off, then they ended up having to do a cornea transplant in the right eye, which made that eye a lot better. And then once they fitted me for those contacts, it took yeah. probably another year to where I could actually like read a road sign or something. Right, yeah. right, right. And and I I know because we've been friends for eight years now. Um, you've had a few transplant cornea redos. H how many have you had? How many of these surgeries have you had? Well, I had one full thickness cornea transplant in each eye. One was in March of 2012. The other one was like April of 2013. Then they did another surgery. I, they all have names, but I don't know what the heck sure. they're called. Where they actually cut the surface of my eye and because there's a, like a really heavy layer of blood vessel. Right. And they pulled some of that up and stitched it to the outside so that it would give blood flow to the corneas to help them heal. Okay. So they did that on both eyes, and then just, what, what was that, a month ago, they did yep. a partial thickness cornea transplant in the left eye. Okay. That I still have, it's still not back. It's not quite right, yeah. I yeah. mean, I think the eye's there, I just gotta get my contact re uh, right. fitted and right. power. Right. And, yeah. um, and you explained this to me, I'm gonna have you explain this to the folks. Um, the surface of your eye is, it's not smooth. Right, like a normal eye is now. So explain the contact that you use now, the contacts you use. Uh, they're called scleral lenses, and they're basically like bowls, big plastic bowls. A lot of people, like you have care, care, keratoconus, mm -hmm. you know what that is? Mm -hmm. It's like your corneas are pointy, okay. not rounded. Right. That's a good, they, a lot of people wear those. Okay. Because um, they, the vision's bad with that also, and what that does is it leaves a space between the cornea surface and your contact that basically has fluid in it. So yep. then that acts as a basically a false cornea surface. Gotcha. Because mine's like all, it looks like the surface of the moon, because when the glue come off, it pulled a lot of the cells off. Yeah. Um, now the right eye, they did the cornea transplant after that, so it's smoother. Yep. But when they do a transplant, now it's not round, it's flat. Yes. So that again makes... Yes. <laughs> so it's just... So it's, yeah. uh, it's an ongoing process. It's oh, yeah. not something that it's one and done and you're good to go. No. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. And how... Um, you mentioned that there were some good things that came out of this. Would you be willing to share some of that? Oh, my. Just, just pick like a top two. 
or top one even. Well, <laughs> probably top one is I got to, I had the time then to become a youth leader, spend a lot of time doing that, taking trips down to Urban Hope, met like a great group of, group of guys, mm -hmm. you, you know, Skip and Chris and, you know, all the, I wouldn't have met them if it wouldn't yeah. have, I mean, I may have in time, but not to <clears> that. <throat> Not to that degree, and then the second one, my my brother-in-law uh, rededicated life to Christ, and my sister-in-law. That's good. Yeah, and they've been through it too. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that's a totally different story, guys. We're not going to get into that one, but yeah, they've been through it too. That's, that's really interesting. Very cool. Anything else that you want to share on that? Maybe another interview. <laughs> That's a whole interview in itself. Uh, indeed, indeed. <laughs> All right, so so the next question then is, uh, what are your thoughts about spirituality and the spiritual realm? Thoughts as far as existence? For you personally, what do you, what do you think about spirituality and the spiritual realm? Well, I think me as a person in this country in general... It doesn't, it's not easy to even process or think about, like, this is a land of distraction. You've yeah. got the missionaries that are <clears throat> in the, they call us the West. Yeah. Like, there, it's an everyday thing. One, because they have to rely on something out of their control most days to even survive. Um, so then, the dark side of that is also relevant to them and and you know they know they know if it's like if it's talked about it's right like here it's just we just don't think about it much um so if you want to you have to make a concerted effort to try and right comprehend it because our minds are just everywhere yeah, very distracted i would oh, agree yeah. with that and, it, and that's a really good way to put it that we live in a culture of distraction oh, we yeah. really do we really do um and it's just getting worse. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so if you'd be willing to maybe flesh some of this out um, as far as how <clears throat> your view on spirituality uh, has impacted you personally. Like, for example. Yeah. When did you... When did you come to the realization that uh, we are not the end-all, be-all as human beings? Um, <clears throat> I don't know the... I wouldn't know the exact answer. Like, I've always known... I've always been told, you know, there's a God, and I, I've always believed that. But when I was in the hospital and couldn't see, and there scraping my dead skin off and like I couldn't have done I, I my my person can't do that here no yeah I, I couldn't have done that so there's somebody else there yeah you know and through that whole thing it was like <laughs> it's it's not it's not a theological discussion anymore it's actuality. Oh, yeah, it's a reality. It's not theoretical. It's actual. Because you've had an experience where in your life you can see the presence of God. Oh, yeah. In your life. Through the Holy Spirit's intervention giving you strength and whatnot. Yeah, and it's just, it was just one thing after another through the whole process. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Just little hints, things nurses would say. <laughs> Well, because I, I would always ask them what their name was because I couldn't see them. So I yep. always got to try to know everyone. You know, what's your name? What's your name? Oh, you know, and I'd talk to them. And, well, like I said, I'm, my name's Ruth, like in the Bible. I was like, oh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. And then, like, for the next month, I'm like, oh, I haven't seen Ruth. I, or I haven't, you know, where's Ruth been? And they're like, Ruth who? I was like, I don't know. She was here the other day. And they're like, no, Ruth works here. So, I mean, I, now, they have people from other 
It's okay. not much to, to come in and take it. <laughs> but she was just there that one time, and she was never there after no that. Kidding. You know what I mean? She just happened to be there that one day and to give me that one word of encouragement. from. So here's the question. Do you think that it could have been an angel that came to encourage you in a time of need? Well, I don't know. They were there. Like, I, they, <laughs> she was wrapping my arms up. Like, so I don't, I, I don't know the answer to that one. But it's possible. It's possible. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's a funny thing when you can't see. Yeah. You're not distracted. So that's where a lot of the things, like, it's, even when... Hang on. I got to think about that for a minute. Just hang on for a second. <laughs> wow. How much... How many times are we distracted by what we see? Oh, all the, every minute, every second. Uh, this will lead in, and I cheated. I watched in one of the other interviews, so I know one of the other questions is. So this will lead into that, this which will, is. Let's see. Well, we only have one question left. Oh well, then it must be that one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like people deny the existence of God because they can't see it, right? But when you can't see anything. Anything's believable. Oh my gosh. Brian, that's crazy. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Now, i got to think about that for a minute. Seriously. Cause, yeah. Because if you can't see anything, and okay, 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 hang on, hang on. Hang on. Right. Because if you're, if you're only relying on what you can see in order to believe it's real, that, so you take that one sense away, and then what? Everything you... Everything you feel is all kind of like, like intuition, if yeah. you want to call it that. It's okay. Go to the next question. Because <laughs> let's it's, just 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 have the conversation. Just go. They'll tie together. No, go go. Just keep going. But if you ask a question, they'll know where I'm going to. <laughs> no, dude, just go with it. Uh, what was I? Um, like people. Yeah. Like there were so many people I had heard about and I knew of in our church, but I never knew what they looked like. Okay. Um, so, you're not distracted by anything, like visually. So you basically listen to them. You hear what you're. You're more focused on what they're saying. You're yes. listening to the inflection of their voice. Like you, you know that person more by m meeting them when you couldn't see him than you can when you can't. See. Indeed. Whether you whether you try to or not, you know right. what I mean. When you can't see, like. You can focus all you want to try not let it be distracted, but you <laughs> if a fly buzzes across your face, yeah, you're distracted. You know yeah. what I mean? So, man, that's amazing. So you, ju you, not that you ju like judge as as a as a verb, like I, but you're unknowingly judging people all the time, unconsciously, like before you even, oh, of course, see, yeah, it's subconsciously your your mind is judging someone based on your whole life experience. What, uh, what you've seen you see. on TV. What you Yes. Make, you know what I mean? Yes. So before you even say you want to talk to that person, or you even step up to that person, your mind's already judged them, and it's going to change how you react to that person. Yeah. When you can't see that, you don't have a distraction. So you're basically going by what they're saying. You're going by what they're, you know, you're listening to how they're talking, how they're saying it, and there's no distractions, and you kind of get to really know that person I guess better I would say right so and I'm not a very good judge of what people look like by their sound I found, I found that out because once I could see I was like who are you <laughs> like I had to re-meet everybody I'm like yeah. wait that's not exactly what I pictured <laughs> and it, it's funny because I I hear voices on like podcasts or on like back when I was a kid and I oh, hear so DJs on the radio I, you worried me there for a second when you heard I hear voices <laughs> That's different. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. And you try and picture that person. But, yeah, yeah, like you hear somebody on a podcast and you're like, okay, I, I can totally picture this person. And then when you see their picture, you're like, yeah, that is absolutely not what I expected. Uh, there's one podcast that I listen to, and I won't, I won't share the name of it, but I fully expected this guy to be like six foot five, built like a football player. He's short. He's like five foot eight and like 140 pounds. Oh, and I'm just like. 
dude, he sounds like a Mack truck and he's built like a Mitsubishi. That's I mean, funny. he's just like this little mini truck. I mean, it's it's funny, but but it, it's like that. I mean, you're, you're, you're describing, you're describing hearing someone's character. Right. And not allowing your visual judgment to cloud who they really are. Yeah. That's so interesting. I, I mean, I've never really thought about that before. And that's one of those things where, like I say, I don't take much bad away from That's one of the great things that I was able to experience through that was just... Because, you know, people come over and bring meals because, yeah. you know, when one starts to go back to work, she, I couldn't cook. Right. She couldn't cook. Right. Um, so people just bring over meals and they'd come in and talk and I'd be like, who are you? Yeah. Oh, nice to meet you. And then <laughs> no they'd talk for an hour, yeah. Wow. Wow, wow. That's pretty cool. That is, that's pretty amazing. Um, was it frightening? What? Not being able to see. No. Um, to a point. I got, I got used to things a certain way. Right. Uh, like my wife was there every single day for... I think for the first couple months she was allowed to stay home. Okay. Um, and I didn't realize the one night she was going to go to a concert or something. She had tickets for years, or not years ago, but months before my accident ever happened. She was like, I'll stay home. I'm like, no, no, go ahead. I'll be fine. And it's like every hour that I got closer, that I got closer, I was like, man, I don't, I don't feel right. <laughs> I was getting anxious yeah. because something was going to change. And then I'm like, because like, she was my eyes then. I said, well, she's gone. I will, you know, what am I going to do? Yeah. So then we had her one cousin come over and stay with me. And I needed to go get a prescription filled. He's like, come on, let's go. And I was like, I don't know. He's like, get in the car. <laughs> I was like, all right. And then he started driving. I was like, oh, my gosh, turn around, turn around, turn around. He's like, just shut up and sit down. We're going to get your prescription. And that, it, you know, you just got to, once yeah. you got out there. And like when yeah. I was in the backyard and got lost, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is horrible. And that's when I started walking around town. I was like, I can't just be stuck here. Right. And I think it's, that's what was scary is you put limitations on yourself. Yeah. You don't even realize you are until yeah. you step out of like your little bubble of security and you're like, oh wait, this is, this is a whole different place. But, Would you say that that is pretty much how we all, I mean, I think every one of us, even if we have all of our faculties, uh, put limits on ourselves because we're afraid of taking the risk. Oh, yeah, 100%. Interesting. Very cool. All right, we'll move on to the last question. <laughs> All right, last question. Uh, what is one thing that you could, you would, let me start that over again. <laughs> what is one thing that you would change in this world if you were able to and why? Okay. So, how I said when I couldn't see, I wasn't visually judging people. Couple that with uh, in Marine Corps boot camp. There's you, everyone's a shade of a green. You're either light green or dark green. That's like there's and not that not that I I often say I wish everyone could just see everyone as the same color. That that's not quite accurate either because you know that's history. That's sure. That's family. That's but just to actually be able to see past the judgment and the bias long enough to get to know somebody like people could have that ability to to figure it close their eyes before they meet someone right you know what i mean right well when you uh, and and you served uh, how many years in, in the corps six six years one tour yep um and it's interesting because i don't know how it is now because i think things have changed pretty considerably uh, things have changed in the military. They, they, uh, well, we won't get into that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole different to topic of conversation. But back in the 80s, 90s, when you would have been in, would have been in the 90s, mm -hmm. uh, all your prejudice went out the window. Well, yeah. Any, any of your inhibitions about somebody, no matter what they looked like, smelled like, talked like, whatever, they went out the window because you had to be willing and able to rely on each other, and they had to be willing and able to rely on you. Well, yeah. Yeah, a prejudice is just going to get you killed. That's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's, 
I mean, that's where a lot of trouble today comes from is just they look at a color or they look at a, you know, the clothes and they, they, you know, people just form a judgment about someone and they never even talk to them or yeah. they don't talk to them because of things they judge and then they miss opportunities and yeah. it's just, you just see people as people. Facts. I mean, if I cut me, I'm going to bleed red. If I cut anyone else in this whole entire planet, they're going to bleed red. Unless they're uh, uh, a lizard person. <laughs> right. <laughs> Or uh, what's what was that guy on Star Trek? What name? Green. Oh gosh, what was it? Klingon? Is he Klingon? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I'm not a big Star Trek fan. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah, I mean that's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Skin exactly. is clothes that we never take off. Yeah. Everything inside the same. Like, so yeah. why do we look at the clothes differently? I don't know. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Very cool. All right, so if someone that's watching uh, is discouraged today, give them a word of encouragement. At least you're not blind. No. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> Unless they are. <laughs> right. Yeah, the trials are, are trials. They're good. You're not going to see it now, but things do get better, and you will see what you learn through that. Mm. So, I guess discouragement is, it's like being in a math class in high school all over again. You don't want to be there, <laughs> you're just uncomfortable, you feel like you're stupid, but when you're building the building, I needed to know how to square a wall. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So. Absolutely. Right on. Very cool. But, well, thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate it. Um... Thanks so much for joining us, folks. Uh, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. And um, hit the uh, the like button. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Um, if you want to continue to see interviews, let me know. Um, we do have some more videos coming up. I've got five or six in the works right now. Uh, different how-tos. And, of course, we have our uh, Tricky Tuesday rant as I drive myself to work on Tuesday. So, anyway... Um, thank you so much for joining us, and we will chat with you guys later.